Well, you had Welcome Janet. Welcome back. Janet is here, without a doubt. <laughs> I said, come take this. What are we taking? <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Okay, today really, and hello, good morning. Good morning, <laughs> Janet. Janet. How are you? It's really about kitchen etiquette. And when we talk about kitchen etiquette, what are, we, what are we really talking about? For me, it's really about, first of all, when you talk about the kitchen, it's about food preparation. Mm. It's, um, it's about cleanliness and hygiene. It's also How about many people um, go in the kitchen apart from those who are making the food. I do. Oh, of course, of course, and in storage, and of course, at the end of the day, safety. That's what we're looking at when it comes to to, <laughs> to kitchens. Yes, and of course, I think for me, I'm going to say something. It's really funny. Food, the, huh? the adage, the mm -hmm. adage is, show me, you know, her kitchen, and I'll tell you the kind of woman that she is. Because okay. really, uh, yeah, because a woman's second home should be her kitchen. Question. <laughs> yes. Must the kitchen belong to the woman? No. Because exactly. I'm going to say, watch that space. The men are taking over. Besides, how many female chefs do you know? Well, the best chefs I, I don't are know males. No? I don't know one. The best chefs are males. And that's the interesting part of it. Mm. So, uh, you know, you need special grace if your husband enjoys cooking. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it really do. But anyway, having said that, though, I would say when it comes to food preparation, first and foremost, you know, over and above anything else, I really think out of this etiquette process, I think everyone should have a, um, a timetable, a meal table on the wall that cuts across a balanced meal. Because a lot of people, they're like, what should we eat today? What should we eat today? And it shouldn't be like that. Mm. If you have a, a, a timetable that cuts across Monday to Sunday and it cuts across your carbs, your proteins, your dairy, you know, you don't have to eat fish every day, chicken every day, meat every day. And of course, we're looking at hygiene, uh, you know, health and hygiene more and more nowadays. So you're, you, the balanced diet is really important. You need to have a bit of everything and not too much of anything. Question, mm. do you have to have so much money to achieve a menu? That's Absolutely a not. You know, um, when you look at how they serve meals in even top-notch hotels. It's very little condiments. Rice is the smallest part, portion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get your, you know, because the entree might be chicken, yeah. fish, or meat. You get that all marinated and looking nice. Then you really need, then you have a bit of vegetable and a bit of rice. Not much. Not much. It's not like a heap of um, rice or a heap of something else. It's just a little bit. And I keep saying, dining is like dancing. Take it one step at a time. Learn how to taste your food, not just chew it. So it's an experience when it comes to it. That's why you see when chefs are doing gourmet cooking, it's really about how it's presented on the plate because it's supposed to whet your appetite when it looks nice, you know? You're not, you're not talking to the ordinary Nigerian there because he just believes in piling up his plate and yeah, eating they're... because he's hungry. He wants to feel his stomach. It's a he psychological. Doesn't care it's about psychological. All that. Yeah, true. It's, you know. it, but it's really psychological because you eat so much. Why do you think there's so much diabetes and health conditions now? Because the they're foods. telling us eating the wrong th food, eating too much of the wrong food yeah. as well. And yeah. it's an issue. And now you see people who used to eat so much before, they're compelled to eat much smaller um, you know, portions. portions. And so that was a norm then, but now we're a little wiser. you know. And even when you have your balanced diet, you know, you have to make sure that when you're cooking the food, don't overcook. We tend to overcook our food a lot. Cook, overcooking the food is killing all the nutrients, and we're learning better now. It's not about how long it stays on the fire. Mm -hmm. It's about cooking it. It's cooked. Take it off and eat it. <laughs> and eat it. Uh, even at the same time, too, you know, when it comes to food, you know, sometimes we've cooked food and there's leftovers, and we keep it in the fridge. We tend to warm it, take a bit out, eat it, put it back in the fridge, bring it out again, warm it. You can't do yeah. that with food. You, once you've brought it out, because don't forget it's pre-cooked before. Mm. So you warm the food, take what you can eat, and eat. In fact, don't put it back in the fridge once you've warmed it. Otherwise, if it's been in the fridge, take the portion that you want, warm well, that, then. and then eat it. We really I, need to be careful. I find that an easier way to deal with that is make sure you put away your food in 
um, one portion portion you know, um, containers. Not everybody has that, you see. Not everybody's mindful of that. So sometimes yeah. there's this rice left over, they put it in a the big container, bowl. a big bowl, put it mm -hmm. in the fridge, mm -hmm. and, and it could sit in the fridge for God knows, for portions, ages. Yeah. yeah, that's nice if you're disciplined. Yeah. But if you're a whole family, put it there and anyone can go in and take out of it. Even that is, is, is dangerous. Even again with food, I mean, you've brought food out that is hot. It shouldn't stay out too long before you eat it. So you have to be because hot food also picks up bacteria. So you have to be very sensitive as to how long you brought out the food. So you've prepared food. You bring out the food when he or she is ready to eat it. So you're bringing out food for your husband, for instance. Is he ready to eat it? Don't bring it out and leave it on the table. Mm -hmm. That's why you find in other countries they keep it in the oven to, to stay warm because mm. it's very important that you are mindful of how you treat food that has been prepared. When it comes to cleanliness and hygiene, personally, even if I've just finished my shower and I'm ready and I'm dressed and I come downstairs, the first thing I do when I enter my kitchen, regardless, is wash my hands because even though my bedroom could be two steps away from the kitchen, there's a whole lot that goes on between those two steps. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're about to touch exposed food, like you want to make a sandwich or something, you really need to go into the kitchen. The first thing you do is go to the tap and wash your hands. For many reasons, not because your hands are not really clean, but you know, you know how you've, you've washed your hands and then you take a white handkerchief and you wipe your hands and it is still dirty. Mm. It just tells you that when you use sanitizers, some will kill the germs, they will not clean your hands. Mm. So sometimes you, really need, you need to use a hand wipe to still wipe off the dirt. <laughs> All right? That's a so, good one. You use sanitizers, they'll kill the germs, they will clean your hands. Sure, it's, it's, yeah. Honestly, it really, it's, it's so much so. And then, so you have to wash your hands first before you do anything, before you touch anything in, in your kitchen. And I always say, um, one thing I dislike in my kitchen, even though I have a cook, I do not like an overpiled sink of dirty plates. I just think it kills I don't think the any, entire... I don't think anyone does. No, well, you know, some people are like, oh, I'll come back to it later. Uh, I'll wash it. And then you're piling up and piling up and piling it up. And you walk into the kitchen, you don't see the cleanliness of anywhere else. You just see the sink and it's like, wow, this kitchen is in a mess. So <laughs> you're either washing as you go along or sometimes I tell my cook, look, if you're not ready to wash the plates, put them in this bowl here. Cover. Keep my sink clean. When you're ready, wash all the plates or whatever together. You know, unlike in other places where we have dishwash, dish, dishwashing mm -hmm. machines where you bung it in the dishwasher, but here we don't. So it doesn't make sense because that's, that's a hazard waiting to happen. Some people plates do are overflowing. Have dishwashing machines. Yeah, and if you have a dishwashing machine, put it in the washer immediately. You might not set it, but just take it away from it. You know, the aesthetics of the kitchen are killed when you keep piling up dirty plates. And then, not to mention, some people they cook and they cook dirty. So they've just cut up cabbage, the whole place is still there, it's in a mess. I keep saying, clean as you go along. Mm. Even if you're not ready to wash them, wipe the surfaces down as you go along because you're building up bacteria that you really can't see, you know. Um, sometimes we're, we've got sponges to wash our plates. We've used them and used them and overused them. When you've used them for a certain time, even if you don't see that it's wilting, you need to change your sponges regularly because sponges actually carry I, I hear, 400 times more bacteria than the toilet seat. How oh often dear. do you need to That's change? science. I would suggest, you know, if you're using a particular, it depends on the type of sponge you're using. You could change them once every three weeks, once every four weeks, monthly, you know, or if it's the smaller ones, every two weeks, change them. You know, because sometimes you're using them to scrub certain things, they're already beginning to rip apart. Change your sponges as regularly as you think you need to, but don't keep them there forever because they keep, and then when they change color, you know that you have to change them. All right? So, <laughs> change, color. change them time and time again. Now, the chopping board again in your kitchen. Sometimes you've got a chopping board that you've been using for years, whether it's plastic or it's wooden. You also need to change your chopping boards regularly, maybe once every two months, change your chopping board. Okay, so with that chopping board, the, the, the plastic one, you know sometimes it leaves marks, and once it does leave marks, you really need to change it, okay? Even your wooden, your wooden chopping board as well, even though you can't see marks, and it still looks as good as new, mm. you need to change it at least once every three months, change your chopping board.